Hey friends, welcome back to my channel, Accidental Beauty. If you're new, welcome. My name is Laura. I'm a self-taught makeup enthusiast who also enjoys fashion and getting a good deal on clothes. And that's what we're going to be talking about today. I want to talk about my experience going to two thrift shops in Toronto, which is where I live. Uh, so really, this is kind of only relevant if you live in Toronto or if you're planning on visiting. But I thought I would share my experience going to these places. That's going to be kind of the first section of this video. And then if you're not interested in that, you can skip ahead and I'll leave timestamps below and I'll show you guys what I picked up on my thrift store haul. So if you guys are interested in that, then please keep on watching. All right, so I went to two different thrift stores. The first one is called Market by the Pound, and the second one is called Just Thrift. Both of them are located on Orphis Road. They're literally, like, I think not really next door to each other, but they're in the same little, like, plaza, if you will. Uh, basically, like, that whole stretch of Orphis Road is, like, tons of... I don't know if they're all outlet stores, uh, but it's just, like, tons and tons of clothing stores, fabric stores... It's amazing. If you like that kind of thing, it is like heaven. So this particular block, as I mentioned, we have Market by the Pound. Uh, there were a couple different sort of furniture consignment stores. Uh, one that was actually right next door. And I think there might have been another one like across the street or something. We didn't go in. Uh, and then, as I mentioned, the other store is just thrift. So let's start with Market by the Pound. So it is a pretty decent sized space and it's basically like, it's set up like a warehouse essentially. So you walk in and the whole premise with Market by the Pound, I've never seen this anywhere before. As it's sort of alluded to in the name, you buy your thrifted clothing based on weight rather than individually priced items. So you fill up your cart with everything that you want there aren't any fitting rooms, so you kind of have to be confident about your size. And then you weigh it, and then it's $3.99 per pound of clothing. So $3.99 Canadian per pound of clothing that you get. I went with my mom, and we went on Boxing Day, I believe. And uh, they actually weren't charging tax that day, which was great. We had to buy five pounds worth of stuff. That day, uh, because there was no tax, it was about three fifty or so per pound instead. As I mentioned, we bought we bought over a little bit over five pounds worth of stuff. It ended up totaling, I think, about thirty five dollars between me and my mom. Everything that we picked up, which is amazing. When I'll show you how much stuff I got, plus my mom got a few other things. Uh, so as far as like concept, really really unique and an amazing way to reduce waste um, when it comes to clothing because that is a big problem in the fashion industry. But you can't try anything on, so you kind of have to hope that, you know, everything fits and then if it doesn't, then you're just kind of, you know, getting rid of it and hopefully, you know, continuing to sort of recycle it and give it new life. But might end up being a waste if things don't actually fit you. But it's so cheap, so it might be better than buying things new. I don't know. I don't know. I'm not really someone who feels super, super strongly about this kind of stuff, but I do see the amount of waste, especially with all of these sort of like micro trends that have been happening on TikTok and the whole idea that you can't wear the same outfit twice, which I think is so ridiculous and not sustainable at all. So I do try to make an effort. You know, obviously I do wear the same things <laughs> over and over again, um, but I'm trying to be a bit more conscious when it comes to like being mindful of consumption and stuff like that. That was a bit of a ramble. To talk a little bit more about Market by the Pound. So you walk in and they've got these giant bins filled with clothing. Like I'm talking maybe four feet by two, three feet, really big bins. And there were tons of them all over. So they were labeled sort of categories. Like you have pants, you have jackets, accessories, purses, 90, 95% of the store was 
women's clothing. There was a section for men on one side. There was kids clothing at the back. Uh, they also had shoes, a whole section for shoes. Uh, those were actually put on shelves for the most part, but everything else you literally had to like dig in these bins to find what you wanted. Nothing was sorted by size either. So they had, you know, everything from, do you call it like straight sizes to plus size to maternity and everything in between all in one bin. Oh, and they also had a bunch of bins that were just miscellaneous. So good luck finding anything. Uh, but anyways, you could see like through the gaps in, um, you know, the, the bin, you could see kind of what was around the perimeter, but literally it involved a lot of just reaching in, sort of pulling things out, trying to see what was underneath to see if I could find anything interesting. Uh, so that took a while, but it was fun. It was a lot of fun. It was just, it was a little bit of a workout, just, you know, pulling like, cause clothes, surprisingly, clothes can get pretty heavy. I didn't really go in looking for anything super specific. I was hoping maybe I could find some secondhand Doc Martens in my size. I'm looking for specifically like the white 1460 boots just because I like the way they look. Not like I need more boots. I already have them in black. That was sort of like something that I was hoping maybe I could find something like, not like I would consider them like super high end, but like, you know, something kind of name brand adjacent, I guess. But otherwise I, you know, I wasn't really looking for any like specific brands. I was also hoping maybe I could find like a cute belt bag or something. It's clearly different in different cities. In my experience, thrifting in different parts of Toronto. I don't like to go in looking for anything specific because most of the time I won't find what I'm looking for. Probably also depends on the neighborhood, how affluent the neighborhood is, or how trendy the neighborhood is. But in my experience, I've had the best luck going in with zero expectations, just sort of walking around and finding Anything that stands out, anything that's unique, anything that I've never seen before in stores or just, you know, anything that catches my eye that's fun and uh, speaks to me and my personal style. Really, I just wanted to find things that were in my size. So hopefully I haven't tried anything on yet, which we'll be doing later in the video. And I've washed everything thoroughly. So everything's clean and ready for me to put on. Uh, but yeah, we spent a good probably hour or two <laughs> just like walking through and looking around and trying to find things that, uh, that were the right size and kind of spoke to our style. The shoe section in Market by the Pound wasn't impressive, uh, which is totally fine. I mean, I didn't look at everything, but it didn't seem like there was anything in my size. So I was like, eh, you know what? Not interested. Um, the purses, there were no small purses. They only had kind of larger purses, tote bag, that type of thing. So I left that. So just one note about Market by the Pound and then we'll talk about just thrift. Love the concept. What was weird is there were scales around the side of the store before you get to the cash register. So you could weigh your stuff to kind of get a sense of like whether you meet that five pound threshold, that minimum. But then there was a sign on the scale that said it wasn't accurate. So it's like, well, what's the point then? Uh, and it turned out when we lined up to pay, uh, my mom's stuff wasn't anywhere <laughs> close to being um, within that five pound minimum. I had a lot more stuff. So we just ended up combining our purchases together. Uh, but it would have been nice if they had a working scale and maybe it just broke with like sort of the Christmas season. But it would have been nice if, you know, you can kind of weigh your stuff in advance so then you can kind of make sure that you have enough stuff to meet their minimum requirements. Uh, but otherwise we didn't pay tax as I mentioned and it ended up being like 35 bucks or something, which is insane for the amount of stuff that I got. It wasn't super busy when we went. We went around, I think we got there around 1 p.m. or so. Which considering it was Boxing Day, it maybe people went earlier, maybe people were out, you know, at the malls and stuff, but it was actually a really pleasant experience. I don't like going Boxing Day shopping in person. 
if I do any Boxing Day shopping, I prefer to do it online. I really don't like crowds and especially sort of post-pandemic or whatever state we're in right now. I don't like crowds even more. It Like just being around so many people makes me really, really anxious. I was pleasantly surprised to see that it wasn't super busy. There were maybe about, I don't know, within the whole store, maybe about 30, 40 people or so, maybe 50, but spread out in a huge like, I wouldn't call it like a warehouse space, but definitely like a really big space with lots of room to move around. So it didn't feel overwhelming. I could look around. I wasn't bumping into people. Like honestly, I was bumping into more or like sort of in the way of employees uh, sorting clothing rather than other shoppers, which was totally fine. It was definitely a really unique experience compared to other thrift stores that I've been to where everything's just kind of on the racks. Uh, like a, you know, any other retail store. So I would definitely go back. I think, you know, I think it's a really cool concept. I'm sure they're getting shipments of stuff in all the time. So the merchandise is always changing. I definitely recommend if you're in Toronto or near enough to Toronto or planning on visiting, definitely, definitely check it out if you're into thrifting because I think it was a really fun and unique experience definitely very productive as far as a shopping trip goes. So that was the first store that we went to. And then we went to Just Thrift, literally at like the other end of the plaza. And that one was also a thrift store, as you can tell by the name, but that one's more of a sort of high-end designer consignment store. The vibe of the two places could not be more different. Just Thrift was, I wouldn't say it was loud, but I mean like, you know, there are people talking. I think there was music playing, sort of a typical shopping experience, I guess. Whereas when we went into Just Thrift, it was so much quieter. Everything was organized on racks. There were obviously prices. The merchandise was obviously a lot more high end. That being said though, considering the fact that they call themselves kind of a designer high end consignment store, it wasn't all designer high-end. Like they had things from Zara, they had things from, I think they had things from RW, which is a Canadian brand, I believe, but um, kind of, I consider them on the same tier as Zara, but specifically kind of like work wear, like office appropriate wear. And about the same, roughly the same in terms of pricing at Zara. So definitely not high end. Maybe you could stretch it and say mid tier. Just found that interesting. That being said, they did have a lot of fur coats. They had, you know, like Marc Jacobs purses, Louis Vuitton purses, lots of guests purses. They had a whole section of Canada Goose jackets, which I found really interesting. I don't know, I didn't think that people would get rid of their Canada Goose jackets. The things that I picked up and looked at were decently priced. I feel like they were, you know, anywhere from 30 to 50% off or so. Uh, can't speak about the Canada Goose jackets specifically because I didn't really look at those because I wasn't, I'm not in the market for another coat. If you're looking for, you know, a discounted, lightly used high-end or designer item. It's a good option. It was also a very big store, probably not as big a space as Just Thrift, but they did have change rooms, which was great. They did have a bigger section of shoes, but the size options, I guess, varied because it's sort of dependent on what they get donated. And they also, what was interesting was like some of the, some of the shoes were sorted into sizes and some, it was just sort of a free for all and you had to kind of look to find your size. So I found that kind of strange. They did have a small kid section and they did have a decent size men section uh, with shoes and shirts, pants, whatever. I think there was some jewelry if I remember correctly. And that's about it. I don't know. I don't really get too excited when it comes to like sort of designer brand name stuff with some exceptions, but I don't actively go seeking it out. 
But, you know, if I'm looking for something a little bit nicer, like, you know, I'm not going to go looking for like a Chanel t-shirt, for example. But like if I'm looking for something for a nice event, maybe even for work or something, then maybe I'd consider, you know, getting something that looks a little bit nicer, a little bit more high end, get a good deal. It's definitely a good option. And if I'm going to go back to market by the pound, I might as well just, you know, sort of peek into just thrift while I'm there because it's literally they're at opposite ends of the plaza. My experience at both places was really positive. Just thrift also wasn't busy at all. It was like actually quite quiet when we were there, which also made it just a more enjoyable experience overall. <laughs> I don't like feeling like I'm sort of packed in like sardines whenever I go shopping, so it just makes the whole experience a lot more pleasant. That is everything that I can think of off the top of my head, but if you guys have any specific questions, feel free to comment below and uh, we will move on to the second section where I talk about what I got and then I'll be showing you guys like kind of how I style these pieces. I literally have like a whole duffel bag <sighs> filled <laughs> with clothes for my haul. I didn't get the duffel bag while shopping. That's literally my gym bag. I'm just gonna be, I guess, pulling stuff out kind of like at random, talking a little bit about it. And then I guess I'll cut to me wearing it, kind of how I styled it, a little bit about like how I would wear this, I talk about my thoughts about each item and like the quality and condition and stuff. Everything seemed to be in pretty decent condition for the most part at both places. Some places there were some items that I saw that, you know, were like a little stained or a little ripped. So obviously I didn't pick those up, but uh, the things that I got, I think were in, you know, almost new condition. Okay, literally in no particular order. First item that I've just happened to pull out is this really, really cute cropped cardigan. I don't need more cardigans. I, <laughs> it's funny. I, when I started university, I wanted to start dressing more grown up and more my age. So I thought that meant wearing cardigans. So literally I bought probably about eight different cardigans and wore them like every day and basically <laughs> like wore them out, destroyed them. Uh, now I'm really into knitted cardigans and I have, I think like three or four more cardigans that are supposed to arrive in like February or so. So I really don't need more cardigans, but I saw this and I was like, this is so cute. It's giving that really preppy vibe. It reminds me of the Taylor Swift cardigan. I think it's super, super cute. Again, I haven't tried anything on, but we'll cut to that footage in a second. The brand for this one is Revamped. It's a size extra large. Really don't remember it being extra large, but anyways, I've never heard of this brand before, but a lot of the things that I picked up were from this brand, so I'm not really... Like, you know what? Let's just Google it while I'm here. Oh, okay. It's Urban Planet. Okay, never mind. Or Sirens, whatever. That makes a little more sense. Never mind. It's fast fashion. But I think it's super, super cute. We'll see how it fits because it's an extra large. Oh, and they even have an extra button that they left over here that's very helpful. It's 100% acrylic. It says to hand wash well. Oops. Oh well. Anyways, I thought it was super cute. And uh, then I'll just show you an, just an idea of how to style this. So I styled this cardigan with a black crop top and I paired it with a high-waisted black pleated skirt. So I could kind of let the stripes on the sweater be the statement piece or like element of this outfit. I went for a very preppy old money look because the sweater is giving that varsity prep school Ivy League kind of vibe. So I really just wanted to play into that. And I added a big headband, thigh high boots and white faux thigh high tights just to really play up that, that old money aesthetic. And then I paired it with a blonde wig, kind of keeping everything toned down to really keep the focus on the sweater. Here you can see I added a star and moon purse as an accent, but like it still 
Even though it's a fun little accent piece, it still keeps the focus on the bright stripes of the sweater as the focal point. Next, uh, this is also from Revamped. This is from their athleisure line. This is a size small and you can't really see, but it's a sweater dress. It's just a plain black crew neck sweater dress. Uh, it's got these cool little zips on either side, kind of by the, the hip area. So you can expand it, I guess, if you want. Just thought it was kind of unique and it's a good layering piece. You know, you can pair it with literally anything. So you can wear them like tights, leggings, Depending on what you're wearing it with, you could probably tuck it in and wear it more as a sweater rather than a sweater dress. And it's just a good basic to have around. So here you can see I wore it as a mini dress and then paired it with some thigh high striped socks to give it kind of more of that e-girl vibe. Here I'm just demonstrating how high you can unzip the slit. It goes up pretty high as you can see. But realistically, if I wore it out, I would probably wear it with like leggings or if I did wear it as a mini dress, I'd put like safety shorts or something underneath because it is pretty short. And I just paired it with a choker and black demonia platform shoes. And then just as a fun pop of color because the whole outfit is kind of neutral, I added a split black and red wig just to add a little pop of color and then to also play off the pink of the socks. I kind of call this outfit like goth loungewear. So anyways, next we have this plaid flannel also from Revamped, from their premium collection. I basically live in these in the winter, and this one is particularly warm, which is great. <laughs> my weight fluctuates a lot, so some of my old ones are getting a little tight or don't fit anymore. This one looked like it was sort of oversized, that sort of like boyfriend look. I don't know, some of these pieces are like really like everyday basics. They're not the most exciting. So I'm going to try my best to style them in an interesting way, at least to show how you can kind of dress up some basics in your closet. But normally like something like that, I'd literally throw on a pair of jeans or some black leggings or something and just wear that and some fuzzy socks and call it a day. But for the sake of this video, for you guys, I'm going to try and just amp it up a little bit. Apparently by amping it up, I mean adding a pair of heeled booties. I don't know, I call this look Nashville chic. Sorry guys, I really tried, but this is kind of an everyday basic. This is actually how I would wear this out. I know it's not the most exciting, but since I'm featuring every other piece that I picked up, I figured I might as well just do an outfit for this top. Since it is such a casual look, I just added a black bob wig and just kind of called it a day. And here I just unbuttoned the bottom few buttons and then tied up the bottom of the shirt just to make it like a little more interesting. I tried guys, I really did. All right, next is this super, super cute floral kind of like 60s, 70s inspired dress. This is from Shein, <laughs> wonderful. It's a size medium. So I'm thinking it hopefully will fit it's a little stretchy. I got this sort of elastic waist, like kind of under the boobs. It's a v-neck. You'll see in the clip, but it's sort of like, forget the name of that style where it sort of cinches in a little bit and then it has a little ruffle at the bottom. Anyways, I really like this style of dress, the sort of vintage inspired kind of flowy dress. So I just kept it very simple, very summery. I paired this dress with white platform sneakers, a black wig, and a black and gold belt just to give my waist a little bit more definition so that the dress could be the standout or focal point because it is a little on the loose side. I don't think it's like big enough that I would need to get it taken in, but the belt just kind of helps give it a little bit more structure, I guess, and sort of emphasize my waist a bit more. Here's an idea of how to accessorize with a purse. So I'm using the same black and gold star and moon purse that I showed you guys earlier. The black and gold from the belt plays off of the purse accents. It's always nice when you can tie your accessories together by like a common color or couple colors. And I think this is just a super cute outfit for a date or like going out for brunch or something like that. Then I picked up this cute little plaid mini skirt, black and white plaid mini skirt, also from Shein. This is a size extra large. And then it says it's a US 12, which I don't believe. This looks 
looks smaller than a 12, but anyways, we'll see when I try it on. And if I remember, I'll also talk about the fit. <laughs> yeah, we'll see how that goes. Hopefully everything fits, we'll see, fingers crossed. Uh, it would be great if this had pockets, but it doesn't. Actually, is this plaid or houndstooth? It's kind of both. <laughs> anyways, I just thought it was super, super cute. I love this type of skirt. If you follow me on my other social media, you'll see I wear this type of thing all the time. Not as much in real life. I don't really go out very much, so I try and make excuses when I do go out to, you know, get dressed up all cute. But definitely for like Instagram pictures and stuff, this will be great. I'd say this is probably closer to a US 8 to 10 than a size 12. But it is very stretchy, I will give it that. Once again, I wanted to go for that very like preppy vibe. So I added the same cropped cardigan from earlier and put a white bodysuit on underneath and then added some white leg warmers just to make it really feel more like a school uniform. And I added platform black demonias and a black heart choker just to be like a little bit edgy. And then for some color contrast with the red of the sweater, I added this mint green wig that I absolutely adore. It's from AliExpress. Just to add some structure to the whole outfit because the cardigan can get a little bit boxy looking. I'm also wearing a white underbust corset underneath just to cinch in my waist a little bit. And a thing that I like actually about this skirt is because it's so stretchy, you can decide how high or low waisted you wear it, which is nice, I guess, to have that option. I'm actually wearing it a little bit high-waisted and it's not too short on me. Although I am five feet, so <laughs> keep that in mind. Uh, but I have encountered a lot of mini skirts from Asian sites, mostly AliExpress, that can be way too short even on me. So this was a nice surprise because I would actually wear this out of my apartment. Next, we have another floral dress. I really love these kind of vintagey dresses. This is like a midi, although on me it might end up being a maxi dress. This is from H&M. It's a size small, but it looks big. So I think it's probably supposed to be that sort of like flowy, oversized, almost shapeless look. It honestly almost looks like a nightgown, but I personally would pair it with this. I'm not really sure what this is supposed to be. This is from Shein. It's a size small. It's like this silky kind of like robe. It it kind of looks like um a bathrobe or something or like a, you know, like a sexy like dressing gown or something. It's like this silky kind of material. But I was thinking when I had both of these together in my cart, I was thinking this could actually pair together as a nice outfit. And there was that trend like a few years ago of wearing sort of like lingerie or even like almost pajamas as clothing and sort of like elevating them in that regard. So that was sort of on my mind when I saw these two together. I was like, these kind of look like pajamas, but I feel like I could kind of also make it work as sort of a dress in like a, like a long cardigan. So I'm gonna style them together and maybe dress it up with some like bold jewelry and try and make it work. But I was really excited about seeing these two because even though this is like well within my personal style, like as far as kind of outside of social media, like what I actually wear on a regular basis, the dress almost feels like too old lady-ish. It feels like an old lady nightgown, but I think, I think this is a challenge that I can have fun with. So I put these two items together and here's the outfit and I think it turned out super cute. The cardigan fits perfectly and I can't wait to wear this with literally everything. It just looks so elegant and put together. The sort of like dusty rose color of this cardigan is super flattering on me. So I think it'll go with a lot of things in my closet and I think I'm gonna wear it like all the time. The dress though, it is massive. It's, I think I said it's a size small, like, I don't know in what universe. I had to cinch it in with a belt. Right now I'm not getting anything altered for the purpose of this video. I just wanted to kind of like show you guys styling options if you have kind of similar pieces in your wardrobe. So I had to cinch it in with this black belt, like just to give this dress some shape, some structure and actually look somewhat close to my size. But you can see it like underneath my boobs, you can see the fabric billowing because it's too big on me. And I don't have a small chest at all. So this is really saying something. I think in this case, 
it does work because the cardigan is a bit forgiving of the sort of oversizedness of the dress. But if I wore it by itself, it does look a little weird. I added white platform sneakers and a black beret just to give it kind of like a cottage core meets strolling down a Parisian street kind of aesthetic. I don't really know if this style has a name. Feel free to comment below if it does. I don't know why I didn't shoot the dress by itself. I only have footage of the dress with the cardigan over top, but the dress itself actually has these amazing, huge 80s style short puffy sleeves, uh, which you can kind of see not laying flat <laughs> if you look at my arms in some of the clips. The sleeves look a little ridiculous, but I kind of love them at the same time. So it's kind of a shame that I didn't get any footage of me just wearing the dress by itself. And I'll see if I can find a picture of this dress uh, just to kind of demonstrate what I'm talking about. Next, talking about getting out of my comfort zone. So I saw this dress and I'm like, this really isn't something that I would normally wear. But again, I'm trying to challenge myself and I, I wanted a wrap dress. Okay, so I did, sorry, let me backtrack. I did actually go in looking for some kind of like stretchy wrap dress. Uh, again, I guess going for that sort of vintage like 70s vibe. So this is from the brand Lily Morgan. Never heard of this brand before, it's a size small literally looks like something that my mom would have worn in like the 80s. I think, is it completely? Yeah, it is completely a wrap dress. Oh, wait. Oh, that's actually really good. So it's actually sewn together on this inside panel. So you're not completely, it's not like, you know, if you like stretch your legs out, you're not flashing everyone because I have another dress like that and it completely opens all the way. So I'm glad that it's actually sewn up properly. So it's a short sleeve wrap dress very very stretchy uh it's like on me it'll be maxi length for sure although it does because it is a wrap dress it's sort of like a little bit of that high low length not as dramatic as like a 2014 <laughs> style it does give some like movement and hopefully it won't make me look super short so this dress is actually super flattering on me i really did not expect it to look this good or be that comfortable actually I kind of wanted a wrap dress, I think I mentioned that earlier, and found this, so I was like, eh, okay, you know, I'll see, I'll try it on and at home and see if it works. And I actually kind of love it. The high-low gives it a bit more of an interesting hemline than your sort of standard maxi dress. And personally, I think it makes me look a bit taller than I actually am. Granted, I did pair it with these knockoff Jeffrey Campbell Lita boots from Forever 21, so the platform also makes me look taller. I really don't like wearing deep v-necks. Like, I don't personally feel comfortable showing cleavage or that much cleavage. Regardless, I think the dress is really, really flattering. And it's the comfiest thing ever. Like, I could live in this. It's so, so stretchy. I love it. So I just paired it with a simple gold necklace and a gold forehead chain thing. Um, I know I look super 2014, like sort of Coachella vibes, but I don't know. I was going for more of like a 70s flower child, hippie inspired feel. So I hope that comes through. And because the print on the dress is so busy, I just put on a black wig, like really just to make the focal point, the dress and the print. Next, this is another stretchy dress, also actually a wrap dress. This is from Susie Shear. We don't have a size, so I just had to guess and it's sort of like this i don't know what you call this like a marled gray i think it's like an a-line stretchy kind of dress it looks like it should have come with a belt but there are no belt loops so maybe that's just how it is because it's a wrap dress it has a little bit of that asymmetry which i think gives it a little bit more excitement than a normal sort of a-line skater style dress uh, so because the dress itself is pretty plain, I put on a more colorful wig. So this red and blonde ombre wig is from my friend Mickey's brand, Swamp Witch Wigs. And then because the, the dress itself is really basic, I just wanted to show how you can kind of like dress it up a little bit more. Also how you can wear a dress like this in the winter. So I added this amazing lavender oversized mock neck sweater that I got from Old Navy. And I just kind of rolled it up so it's more of like a cropped length because it is kind of like a almost tunic length on me. 
Okay, and then next, so <laughs> these are pants from H&M, US Canadian size 10. Right now I'm sort of sitting at a size six to eight, but H&M sizes are sometimes inconsistent and they sometimes run kind of small. So this looks like it'll fit. It doesn't have really a ton of stretch. Now, did I need these pants? No, but I do have a weakness for pattern pants. I also own basically the exact same pants from the brand Cynthia Rowley, which I'll show, I think, when I sort of like model these or style these. I don't know, I picked them up because I saw the familiar pattern. It's not exact, but it's very, very close. So I picked them up, had a good laugh, put them back, and then I was like, wait a second. My Cynthia Rowley pants right now are a little bit small, but I just love the pattern. It's just such a fun, unique, statement making pattern. So then I picked them up again and stuck them in my cart. I'm like, yeah, you know what? It's $3.99 or like $3.50 or whatever it was that day per pound. One pair of very light pants really isn't gonna make the biggest difference. So I bought them. When I, so when I show you how to style these, I feel like a lot of people are really intimidated by pattern pants. So because of that, I feel like a lot of people don't experiment very much with patterned clothing in their personal style, in their wardrobe, um, unless it's like a single thing, like a dress or something. I think that's a shame because patterns are so much fun. They're a great way to express yourself. I love playing with patterns all the time. The key is that you need a lot of neutrals to balance them out. So if you have a fun patterned shirt, then you need plain pants or a skirt or something and vice versa. Unless you want to start experimenting with mixing patterns on patterns, which was a trend also a few years ago. Personally, it's a little intimidating for me. So generally I stick to a solid and then a pattern. I look for the dominant colors in the pattern and then try and find a shirt or pants that match. That's kind of about it, but really uh, whatever the like loud patterned thing is, I let that be the statement. I let that do the talking and everything else is sort of dialed back to really let it shine. That's my advice. As I mentioned, I looked at the colors in the pants. So we have magenta, white, and navy. So really any solid color shirt in those colors would match. Magenta might be a little too hard to match the exact shade here. It's like a very specific shade. Because of the sort of like 50s inspired cut of the pants, I went with a crop t-shirt to really go for that vintage style, really lean into it. I went with a black t-shirt instead of navy, even though I do actually have the exact same shirt in navy. I thought the blue would clash too much with the pink, so I think I probably went with black just because it pretty much goes with everything. But I think in this case, the pattern is small enough that I don't think it really matters. You're not really gonna be standing that close to someone wearing these pants for anyone to really notice. So I think it works. And I just added some white platform sneakers, the same ones that I've been wearing throughout the video, just to make my legs look a little bit longer. And then I added a simple gold necklace and a ginger wig just to play off the pink in the pants and also to contrast nicely with the black top. I absolutely love the cut of these pants. I think they're super flattering, slimming on me. They make my hips and butt look amazing. The dark color and the crop of my t-shirt also draws the eye down to the curve of my hips, which I think is also super, super flattering. And then here you can see I'm comparing the original Cynthia Rowley pants to the H&M ones. As you can see, the original is a lot more cool toned and more saturated. And the H&M ones are warm toned and they're like a little bit faded looking. I actually did see these in store when they were selling them. From what I can recall, they were actually like kind of faded, like they weren't as saturated as the originals. Like it's not just that these are secondhand and probably have been washed several times. Like the pattern itself is a bit more dull. So that was everything that I picked up from Market by the Pound. Literally the only thing that I picked up from Just Thrift was this amazing floral bomber jacket, or I'm sure there might be a better name for this style. No, there definitely is a name. I can't remember what it's called now, but basically really beautiful floral, kind of like almost cherry blossom stitched bomber jacket. And then the pattern continues on the back. This is actually from Zara. 
This is nicer than like anything I've ever seen from Zara. Personally, I'm not the biggest Zara fan. I think a lot of their stuff is overpriced and overrated and not really well made. But this looked really, really nice on the rack. It got a little wrinkled in the wash. Uh, it's got pockets, a uh, nice zipper, and I don't really need another coat. I actually don't need another coat, but I thought maybe I could also wear this as like sort of a statement cardigan sort of thing because it's just so pretty on its own. So I really leaned into that cherry blossom imagery and I sort of did a 90s grunge meets Japanese Harajuku meets anime girl look here. I don't know. <laughs> I was just really inspired by the cherry blossom. So I really just wanted to bring in that Japanese influence and sort of that anime girl look. So sort of think of this as like a mix of an outfit from the anime Nana but a bit more kawaii, a bit more tumbler, sort of like make it more aesthetic, I guess. I paired the jacket with the same black crop top that I was wearing in the last outfit. And then I paired that with my favorite, absolute favorite, favorite purple plaid skirt. That is a little too small on me right now. So sad. Then I added the white faux thigh high tights that you saw me wear earlier. And I added these black zip up demonia boots and a dangly choker. And then playing off the purple in the skirt, I added a purple wig and then put it into half space buns to really add that sort of 90s meets anime girl vibe. Here I'm just trying to show you the gorgeous embroidery on this jacket. Seriously, this is such a nice jacket. I am so happy that I picked this up. This might be my favorite piece from the entire haul. So that was everything that I picked up from both Market by the Pound and Just Thrift. Honestly, my experience was so good. I really, really recommend checking out both stores if you're kind of in the area or going to be in the area. The only thing is, as I mentioned, unfortunately, Market by the Pound doesn't have a change room. So you really have to be good at guessing your size uh, or if you come across clothing in a brand that you know what size you are, then obviously that's not a problem. Whereas Just Thrift, you do have a change room. So if you have a body type where like you really need to try things on or you're very particular with how things fit on you and you don't wanna gamble and take that risk, then something like Just Thrift might be a better option for you. I don't know, personally, I like to kind of take risks when it comes to like thrifting. I feel like that's kind of part of the fun so it didn't really bother me so, so much that uh, I couldn't try on most of the things, but I'm usually decent at guessing my size. But overall, I had a really good experience and highly, highly recommend it. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. Let me know what you thought in the comment section below. Um, if you've made it to this point in the video, I'd love it if you could comment your favorite outfit from the pieces that I styled. I'd love to hear your thoughts or if you have any other like styling suggestions, I'm totally open to those as well. These were just sort of like inspiration, just sort of putting together like one outfit per item. So obviously you can, a lot of these you can style in, you know, a multitude of different ways. I don't know if I'll be doing this for everything, but I will be probably before this video even goes up, I'll probably be posting some of the outfits on my other social media. So if that's kind of like the styling and, you know, putting together cute outfits and stuff, if that's kind of more your thing. I'd love it if you could check out my other social media accounts. Just any kind of interaction really just helps tell these social media platforms that you're interested in my content and then hopefully it'll show my content to more people. So any type of like liking, commenting, sharing just really boosts my visibility and it just really helps me out as a very, very small creator. Um, and I always leave links in the description box for all of my social media accounts so you can check those out. My channel is like predominantly makeup and beauty and skincare and that sort of thing but I really do enjoy experimenting with fashion. If you guys want to see more of that content, also feel free to comment below. It sort of helps me figure out what kind of content my audience wants to see so that I can create more of that content that you enjoy. 
I really do like putting together sort of these like styling videos, even if it's not like a haul of new items, even if it's just sort of styling different outfits. I really do like making that kind of content. It's just very, very time consuming to film and edit. So if that's something you want to see, then let me know and I can spend the time working on it. As you can probably tell, like my viewership isn't super high. So if there is a demand and more people want to see that, then let me know. If not, then also let me know so I can sort of figure out what direction to take my channel. Social media is hard. This is literally a hobby. I don't get paid to do this. I'm funding this channel out of my own money. It's again, it's just a hobby. I'd love to turn it into like a part-time job or something, but as of right now, I'm not getting paid. You know, I do this because I enjoy it, but it would be nice if I could do something more with it. Literally like any kind of feedback on how I can improve my content would be awesome. So I can hopefully grow as a small creator, hopefully to a slightly less small creator. And if you enjoy the content that I post here on my channel and you want to see more, I'd love it if you could subscribe and turn on notifications and that way you'll get updated every time I post a new video and I'll see you guys next time.